Then back to the excitatory postsynaptic potential. So this maybe it doesn't have to be from an electrical gap. It's any potential that is generated that helps excite the cell. But remember, it's not that big of an amplitude. So this could result from not only the electrical synapses, but anything that makes a sodium channel open. And so sodium flows into the cell, depolarizing it a little bit, and you get this EPSP. And brings it, a maybe not to threshold, but it brings it closer to threshold. So it makes it easier. So like in this channel only opens when the cell is depolarized a little bit already. So that EPSP is going to help bring it to that. And there are a whole bunch of different types of neurotransmitters used in different parts of the body for different purposes. Uh, the Dale's principle says that there's one type of neurotransmitter for each neuron in general. So pretty much each neuron is going to be specialized to one type of neurotransmitter. Although occasionally you have the dense vesicles with various peptides or proteins that help modulate things. And so a couple of the major neurotransmitters, uh, amino acid ones, are glutamate, uh, GABA, and glycine. Uh, GABA and glycine are both inhibitory. Glutamate's excitatory. Some amines, uh, acetylcholine and dopamine, epinephrine, uh, histamine is an inhibitory, epinephrine is a stimulant, norepinephrine, serotonin, um, modulatory peptides can include all of these. And what do these do? So there's agonists and antagonists. So when all these things are flowing around in the synaptic cleft and randomly binding as they come in contact with the receptors, there's different things that they can, how they interact. So sometimes you have agonists. So it's a drug or a second neurotransmitter which can bind to the activation site of a channel. So in this example, you have an acetylcholine channel and the acetylcholine can bind and open it. Or nicotine can come in and open the channel. Or as an antagonist, this uh, curer can come in and block that channel. So it would prevent, that chan prevent the acetylcholine from coming in and opening it by, combining in, by competing and binding to the same spot. Or it could be a non-competitive where it binds to another site that causes a protein conformation change and makes it so acetylcholine can't bind. Then you have another example with uh, glutamate where you have these various receptors where either the AMPA or the glutamate can bind and activate it, the NMDA and glutamate or the kinate and glutamate combined. And then here's a list of some of the, some big neurotransmitters and their agonists and antagonists. So from that you can kind of start to see that this is what some drugs are doing when they're affecting people's brains. So some like uh, cocaine is a dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin reuptake inhibitor. So remember that these neurotransmitters are cycling. If they can't, so the reuptake or the cycling stops, then you run out of neurotransmitter and it blocks whatever those pathways were and what they were doing. Or some like a, this toxin disrupts the snare. So the snare was allowing the vesicles to bind to the membrane and be released. So now you can't release the neurotransmitter at all. Um, or LSD is a serotonin agonist, so it's activating those same spots. So whatever, when the serotonin, where its serotonin will be working, you're adding all this other chemicals in that activate the same pathways. 
without an action potential being there.